I need to be around people that I that I can learn from and, and pick up tips. And every day I'm picking up tips from, you know, what my broker says and what my partner says. And just being around this new energy is just, you know, kind of gave me life again, really. Welcome to the show, Lex Orozco. Got it. Got it. Awesome. That that wasn't so hard. I am so excited to talk with this amazing person who you guys probably know that I've met at an event. I was super impressed by him that I asked him to be on the show because I think he has so much knowledge and so much things that he can share with this community that I think is going to fast track your growth to whatever that next level is of you playing bigger. So let's dive in. Lex, tell me really quickly, in a snapshot, what led you to where you're at today? I honestly don't have a great, uh, you know, I kind of fell, I guess, you know, I don't know if I could swear, but ass backward into this. You know, I just got someone, uh, we started another business together. I had a full-time job out of college and, um, you know, we started another business together and I gave up my weekends and every spare minute I had to work for free trying to build this new business. And it's not that it didn't succeed. We ended up selling it. But the, one of the partners within that business, um, just, you know, kind of kept telling me, Hey, you work so hard, you have a full-time job and you're giving this everything. It's like, you should do real estate. And I'm like, I didn't really have any knowledge of it and didn't really know, you know, what was possible. And he just kept pushing, pushing, pushing probably for like six months, trying to get me to, you know, do real estate and get me in the business. And, you know, he offered to pay me a small salary to just kind of learn. And he kept upping his offer, upping his offer, upping his offer. Until eventually, it took him about six months and he kind of wore me down. And, you know, I thought I was secure in a $25 an hour job. Now, that was, you know, how many years ago? That was 12, 13 years ago. But $25 an hour was big to me at that time, kind of out of college or a couple of years out. He just really felt that, you know, I could do it. And I took the leap. I went to work with him. It actually didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go, but he helped me get my license. I got my broker's license right off the bat, which is kind of crazy these days because I had the college experience. So I was lucky to get that, you know, he helped me get into, get into it. He showed me a little bit of, it was more REOs and things were a little bit different at that time. So I was learning a little bit different part of the business, but you know, once I got a little taste of it and, and actually the the thing that really changed my mind is we had an investor come in and I saw their bank statement. And once I saw their bank statement, I realized I was doing something wrong. Like there's more possible out there than what I've been um, shown. And that kind of changed everything. And, and I didn't end up staying with that brokerage for long. I, I went into a different brokerage there. I just kind of had to figure it out, my, out myself. You know, it was, I would say three to four years of not being mentored, not being, you know, taught anything, just kind of learning on the fly and building really slow. You know, everyone, it's always shocking to me this, you know, these days when I see realtors come out of the gate their first year with 25, 30, you know, 30 deals, I did two my first year and then for my second year and really, really just progressed slowly. And not till I met my mentor, I think five and a half, six years in, did things really change for me. And I, you know, my eyes really opened to what's possible, but I never had sights on getting to this point where I'm at right now. I just worked hard every day. I worked hard every day. I was working a lot of buyers. I was, you know, in different cities driving, you know, six, seven hours a day, just showing properties every day. And just trying to piece it together at that point. And I never had the vision of, you know, something big. I just, every day with the same mindset of just progressing and, and trying to put more deals in contract and not till again, till I met my mentor and realized there was a lot to learn, did things start changing for me. And 12, you said 12 years later, you guys did some massive production last year. Tell like the audience that's listening and, or even watching is what did you guys do last year? I guess I can back it up. I started a team in 2021, in March of 2021. So not even the beginning of the year. So, and then in 2021, I personally did 110 million and my team did about 260 million. And that was probably with about six people. From that time point, I grew the team to over 30 members. I would only say I had about maybe 15 producers in 2022. I personally did 170 million myself, and then my team did over 400 million in uh, last year. That's massive production, and I want to kind of dive into that. So, when you are on that scale and you have 
30 team members, 15 producers, right? You're doing alone a hundred, over a hundred million, 170 is what do you think caused you to actually even start a team? Let's like even go back because there are some people that, you know, like you said, you meet people today, they're doing 30 deals. There must have been a point or what like thought process did you go through? It'd be like, I want to actually start a team because starting a team is not easy or walk in the park. I actually did. I never wanted to. I never want to. Um, I started looking for my whys and why do this. And it's really about the camaraderie and it's really about the, you know, the friendships and the relationships that I built in this business. And, and that's really what at its core, that's what, you know, it's all about for me. It's kind of funny. I was uh, sitting in, I always got to the office at 7 a.m always every day. And uh, everyone knew that I was always there at 7 a.m. And uh, in 2020, I was only doing about 30 million a year. And kind of funny that at the same time, two guys approached me in different ways. One guy approached me and said, hey, I see you're doing a lot of deals. I can get a lot of leads, but I can't close them. How about I refer you the business and you give me 25%. So I was like, I thought it was a scam call because it, it came in as a text and He's like, I'm in your office. And I, I still thought it was a scam call. So I was like, hey, I'm a little bit busy right now, but let's get on a call you know, in about an hour and we'll kind of go through this. So get on a call with them and he explains the same thing to me. Hey, I get a lot of leads, listing leads. I can't close them. Can I refer them to you? And I was like, well, why don't you just go on the appointments with me? I'll teach you how to do it and you can take 60%. So he's like, wow. He's just really surprised that I said that. We set up a meeting to meet like the next day in person because he didn't believe it. And I was just like, well, if he's going to give me leads, I'm going to help him out. And it's a win-win. Next day we went through it and it turns out, you know, we kind of formed a little partnership at that time. He brought in three listings and we signed them all within about less than about three weeks. And then there was another guy that, you know, really young, you know, just new to the business or, you know, a year or two in, but didn't know what he's doing. And he said, Hey, can you help me with this deal? And he asked me like two questions about the transaction and he never left my side. So from those two, we kind of set something up and it kind of just grew from there and it, it went crazy. About a month later, I hired my assistant and it's kind of like, it was kind of fate because I didn't really need an assistant or I didn't know that I needed one. But the second I hired her, that's when things really changed because I didn't know I was going to start getting as busy as I was. And she really just opened things up for me because she focused on all the back end. And I focused on concentrating on marketing and getting more deals. And from that point forward, I probably quadrupled my business and it just went crazy. And again, I didn't know I was going to need her, but it turned out it was like everything fell into place at the perfect time. Well, congratulations on accidentally building a team without anything. So here's the thing. And sometimes it does happen that way. People see you, see your success and they want to attach to success. But let's talk about the flip side. What do you think are some of the biggest challenges that you've had to deal with when building a team that most people probably don't know? Yeah, I think I, I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest with you. And I had no systems in place. And myself and my mentor, we talk about this all the time. You know, we've been in the business for so long and, you know, we really had no backend system to track all of our past clients and all of our past data and all the leads. And, we, you know, just to be honest, we've missed out on so much. You know, I feel really kind of dumb that I've gotten to this point and I didn't have all all that back end in place. So just when I, you know, as we're building, it's great when, you know, deals are flowing and everything is going good and, you know, everything is closing quickly. But when the market changes and you really start evaluating your business, which I had to do, and I realized that, you know, I built a, a business, you know, the foundation was very shaky and it was going to pro probably fall over and collapse very soon if I didn't change things. And that's why I kind of switched direction. So I really built it not knowing how much time you would have to put into other people and how much time it took away from my business. So as it grew from three to 30, it really became a lot more of a management role than, you know, real estate, what I loved. And I really got away from it and it could it kind of took my joy, you know, slowly out of, out of the day to day to where I was just kind of like overseeing people oversee a deal and making sure nothing went wrong and not really being in the day-to-day -day grind that I like to do. I think kind of the pitfalls of it was just, we weren't ready to grow that fast. And then we got so popular so quick where I was like interviewing new agents every day. And my days were spent overseeing deals. And then it was spent talking to probably two and three new agents, you know, every other day. And for me, I like to kind of just get my headsets on, dial in and just get to work. 
And when you do that and you do it for an hour and then you have to talk to someone and then you try to get back to work and you really can't get back to work. So your flow is just messed up every day. And I kind of found that growing too fast was not a good idea. You know, it's great for the look and hey, we got another agent. And But, you know, to me, as I, as I look back and, and kind of analyze what I built, I realized I'd much rather something a lot smaller. I'd much rather have agents that are all kind of on the same page, you know, experience level where they're all kind of grinding at the same time and not, you know, training is is something that's very hard and you need to be good at training. And I don't think that's a skill that I have. I think that the agents that I brought on my team were lucky enough to go on a lot of listing appointments with me, kind of on the job training, but day-to-day training when you don't have that in place for new agents. And I, I, I always hate to say this, but I feel like no brokerages out there really have a good training system to bring new agents on. And it kind of kills me because that's how I came up. No training at all, just trying to figure it out. And I love that I see new agents today reaching out and trying to, you know, there's new agents all the time reaching out to me and asking for advice. And I never, maybe because social media is so much bigger and there's so much more access to people, but I never like reached out to people early on, maybe because I was too proud, but I just never reached out and tried to get the help that I should have gotten. And I think it stunted my growth. And I'm glad to see that new agents are doing that. But for me, it's really hard to bring a new agent on and train them and know the right things that they should be learning when I didn't have the right structure when I came up. So I think those are some of the pitfalls, right? You have to have those systems in place to be able to onboard new people, to be able to bring them through a training program. I didn't really not till I've changed brokerages now. And I guess that's another topic we can roll into, but I literally just sat through 16 days of training with my new brokerage, 16 days. And I couldn't believe it. And every day is something very, very valuable. And I'm not someone who can sit through training. I get antsy and I don't want to be there, but I found value in every single day of the training. And it, it really opened my eyes to like what a real brokerage with systems in place can do for their agents. And even my agents, they're all just so pumped up every day. They're like, I can't believe we just learned that. I can't believe we're getting this insight and info. And it's just such a different place than anywhere I've ever been. And it's really causing me to, you know, when I came here, I thought that I had the best listing presentation out there, right? Because I, you know, I close about 90% of my deals. I get almost every listing appointment that I go on. And now I've been shown something a little bit different. And now I want to redo my whole listing presentation and do it over because the insight that they've brought and the, you know, showing statistics and showing what they show is going to really help me to, um, I think, I don't know if my number is going to improve, but I think I'm going to feel better going in because I'm going to be more prepared for every listing presentation, even though I was, but just this knowledge is going to take me to another level. And I think uh, I'm excited for that. So good. There's so many nuggets in what you said. I think you bring up a lot of different points and a lot of different value. One, I think you see so much value in where you're at today because you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of look at the world as you can't have happy without sad. You can't have good without bad. You can't have great pizza without tasting terrible pizza, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we go into a situation, whether we partner with you as a brand new agent, we see all these things and they're like amazing but we don't see the value because that's all we know until we switch, until we have different mentors, until we actually are exposed to other things and going, well, my training wasn't that great. And you said something earlier. So I I think that like you guys should definitely re-listen to what he said when it comes to training, when it comes to being exposed to different things, 16 days of training, that's a lot of training, but look how much more you're going to service your clients your agent, because you have a different way of thinking of how you even, who's done hundreds of listings in his career, and you still found an opportunity to learn. You never stop learning in this business. And with that, you said that you had made the transition, you had made the switch, and we can definitely talk about that because I think sometimes when we make the switch, it's, and I'm hearing that a lot right now, right? New market, end of the year, we started hearing about it. Like what's, what are my options? And there's a lot of fear when it comes to change. Was it just a simple decision of like, hey, we're going to go? Or were you actually nervous and scared? And like, walk us through what you kind of went through for those that are listening that, you know, know that they need to make a change, but they're like, is it what it really is on the other side? And am I really going to grow my business? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, honestly, I feel like I did it uh, a little bit wrong. 
not that I made the change, but just the way I did it. You know, I built a team and, and I built a family. It's kind of funny that the day that I met you was the day that we spoke and I was putting on a very strong face and I really don't feel like I should have been there speaking that day. I was just so broken and emotional inside from my change and moving over. And, you know, I think I, I kind of, I killed a lot of friendships. I really did because the transition was not a good transition. For me, it's who you want to build this thing with and who you want to, you know, grow with, right? And I want to, you know, be around people that not only I don't want to be around them in the office, but I want to be hanging out with them on the weekends. And I had the opportunity to, you know, now build something with my, you know, former mentor. And now we're kind of, we're kind of equals, but we have the same vision. And since the market is changing, you kind of have to evolve and you can't do the same things that got you there aren't going to get you to where you want to go. I strongly believe that. So I knew that. I needed a change and, um, you know, kind of the first thing that the first domino that fell was I kind of went to my old partner and I said, Hey, you know, uh, we were already building a backend system with a guy in our office. And I said, Hey, you know, we need to have this backend system for our team. Are you okay with paying for half and I'll pay for half? And, you know, he said he wasn't okay with it. You know, he kind of wanted to stick to what we were doing, but not put up the money for the backend system. And that was kind of the first, you know, sign that we had different views on where we were going. And we were already kind of, you know, unfortunately growing apart. And I know this is kind of a little, get a little into it, but I mean, we were kind of growing apart in that sense. And then my, you know, my, my mentor slash partner brought a, a very, you know, great opportunity for me. And I started thinking about it and it really happened very quickly. And on my part, I feel like I did it wrong. I should have really sat my team down and this is what I'm thinking. But for me, I'm just like, wow, this is a great opportunity. I'm not in a good headspace. I'm not working hard these days. My momentum and motivation is gone. All I do is come and sit in the office and, you know, from the outside, everyone looking in, I'm, you know, selling 170 million, but I'm not really doing much day to day because it's kind of on auto drive, which is great, you know, for a while, because I went so hard for, you know, eight, nine, 10 years, every day going very hard and to get a little break and to, you know, kind of coast a little bit is great, but that's honestly not what I want. You know, I'm a very hard worker. I want to grind and get after it every day. So when I presented, you know, the change of going from a, you know, hundred percent brokerage where there's no systems, no training, nothing in place to moving over to a brokerage that has everything in place, but Hey, your split's going to be a little bit lower. I'm going to be able to provide you leads. Cause I'm going into a brokerage that's going to provide me a lot of leads for you guys. You know, a lot of my team members, I went from 30 to bringing over four, four agents, which is, you know, kind of crushed my heart because, you know, I, I love a lot of those people to death and, you know, they're really just family to me, but they didn't see the value in, you know, what I was, you know, presenting to them. And it kind of hurt because, you know, I feel like I got a lot of these people and I really like pushed these people into kind of the spotlight. I really focused on pushing my agents out there. And if you see my Instagram, you'll see me with a, all kinds of agents and I made sure that they always got recognition. So it kind of really hurt that, you know, I made the transition and I was doing it to help everyone and they didn't see the value in that. And, you know, my view is to the future and I think their value, their view is present, right? Let's keep doing the same things we're going to do and it's going to work and we're going to be successful when, you know, unfortunately I think that, you know, I, I helped out getting a lot of those listings, you know, a big majority and it might be a little different now. So. It's kind of been a very, you know, rough, rough transition. I've never really gone through that. I've never really gone through that kind of like heartbreak of like, you know, leaving people that I, you know, I've grown with and, and helped grow. But on the flip side, no one's going to pay your bill, right? And you have to look at yourself and what you need. And I needed a restart. I needed to rebuild my team. I need to rebuild myself because even, you know, the numbers look great, but you know that, you know, I, or at least I knew personally, I wasn't doing the best possible work. I was getting really sloppy with the listings that I was taking on. Just a lot of, you know, not great stuff because you're not engaged every day. And ever since I've, you know, came over, made the transition, I've still been dealing with, you know, the heartbreak of, you know, leaving people, but I found my love and my joy for real estate again. And, and you know, I'm back to getting up early. I'm in the gym early every day, getting after it. And everything that I did do well over there, I want to improve. And I want to make sure that I keep evolving and improving. And I think the most important fact of everything is now I'm around people that have produced more than me, that have done more than me. You know, my broker here has, has built this brokerage and they sold, you know, 1.4 billion last year. And that's inevitably maybe not build a brokerage, but I want to get my team to selling over a billion. And so I need to be around people that I, that I can learn from and, and pick up tips. And every day I'm picking up tips from 
you know, what my broker says and what my partner says and just being around this new energy is just, you know, kind of gave me life again, really. And it just brought me, you know, a lot of happiness. And now I'm ready to get after it and start over. And it feels good to start over. Well, thank you for sharing. I know it's not easy making that transition. And I think there's a lot of self-awareness. There's a lot of reflection. What would you do differently? And I think just sharing what you just shared today could help a lot of people that are listening. So let's kind of switch gears. You did massive production. You had this team, you rebuilt, you were in this process of rebuilding. Where do you get majority of your business today? So today, everything is from farming, marketing, flyering, it's kind of great that I joined this brokerage because they're actually probably the highest producing buyer lead broker, probably in the South Bay and, you know, probably in, in California. Most of their business comes from, you know, leads and, and buyers leads. And they did again, 1.4 billion. And they would bring me a lot of the buyers on a lot of my listing. So it's kind of cool that we're, we're marrying these systems together. But the majority of my business comes from farming. I do, um, I was up to about 300,000 homes monthly farming. Actually, I don't know if I should let the cat out of the bag, but I kind of restructured everything when I moved over and I realized that I don't want to go wide anymore. I want to go deeper into my farms. And I think I know pretty confidently it might hurt my numbers in the short term, but in the long term, it's going to be a lot better for me. So I'm ready to take my lumps right now and maybe not, you know, sign listings every day like I was. But I think once I really dial these farms in and start going deeper, I think it's going to be a lot better because I'm going to try just to hit them more repetitive, right? I was doing once a month farming and now I'm going to start doing like one and a half months, hitting them twice a month and seeing how that does to really take market share in an area. And that's what I want to try to do. You know, you said something that was really key and I think it goes to all niches and all industries is sometimes it looks awesome to go really wide, to have multiple locations, to have multiple team members, a large team. But if you actually go deep, in an industry with more frequency and higher volume as far as touches, you actually in the long run, if you look at business models, will outweigh this short term, what you feel is back steps for a bigger return later on in the future, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, there's a lady, uh, you know, locally, she farms a thousand homes and consistently yearly, uh, she's been doing it for over 20 years and consistently she gets about 20 listings from those thousand homes every year. And she just goes very, very deep into that farm. And she's actually in my area. So it's going to be hard to penetrate that little pocket that she has. But, you know, what I always tell people is like every single super agent out there, every single one, they've got there through farming. Maybe things are changing and it's more lead dominant now from online. But if you really want to be the name and that face in that area, it's going to come from farming. It's just facts. Because I study a lot of agents. I spend so much time studying. I was kind of searching MLS yesterday and I was seeing some new names pop up. And it's a lot of investments that people are flipping and those are the people that they're using to represent their flips. But whenever I catch new names, I make sure that I go ahead and study those people and see what they're doing to see if I can take anything from what they're doing to add to my game. So I know that, you know, going in deeper is going to long term, it's going to be the better play for me. Yeah. So now that you have studied people and the market has shifted, what are you doing differently? So maybe give them some tactical things that you are actually doing that you can probably share with our audience today? I think, uh, you know, I'm, you know, this new company, this new brokerage has really like made me focus on my sphere. So that's being worked on in the back end. So I'm getting all my, uh, you know, sphere going to be put into, you know, Boomtown, which I've never worked with and never had. And it sounds really bad to be at this point and never had a CRM and never had anything besides my Excel sheets. But I've always been good enough to generate new business. But I think that honestly, I've been missing probably 30, 40%, you know, more business yearly just because I'm not, I didn't do my past client follow ups. I didn't do that. So right now, first quarter, I'm really working on following up with all past clients, just everybody in my phone, everyone in my sphere. Not something I'm comfortable with because I always feel like I'm bothering people. And I always, you know, they know I'm a realtor. I'm everywhere in, in the South Bay. I'm absolutely everywhere. You know, I'm on billboards, I'm everywhere. So people know. But it's kind of funny that I've, I've gone through my phone and just sent a quick, you know, Happy New Year's text to uh, just about everyone. And the amount of responses that I got back was insane. Just telling them, hey, you know, I'm here for any of your real estate needs, right? And people that I sold houses three years, three years ago that I never followed up with. And I'm really ashamed to say that to, to the people out there, but it's, it's, it's honesty. They're all reaching back out. And, you know, of course, I'll reach out to you were great when you helped us. I'm getting fantastic responses. And even people that I, I met that I didn't help out 
still know who I am. And they, they're like, we'll definitely come back to you for any real estate needs. So um, really focusing on past clients and then really just, I think it's been a, a couple, like a month of just analyzing my business and just like, where are the holes? How do I get better at what I'm not good at? Uh, and how do I double down on what I am good at? So starting Monday, you know, we have so many new scripts and so many new presentations that we have to go over and data points, you know, here at this new brokerage. So myself and my team are going to be starting Monday every single day until we're all perfect on our scripts, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every single day starting next week. And that's going to be consistent until everyone is 100% dialed in. And then just helping the, you know, helping the team members that I have on my team improve, right? I have one guy that door knocks all day, every day, but he's not great with price per square foot. And he's not great with, you know, he knows what a house sells for, but he can't back down the numbers and really explain it. So really helping him every day and, and really staying on top of him and making sure he's studying MLS every day. And also getting myself back to just studying MLS and studying homes and studying, you know, what's out there, what's new. I think these are all things that I lost and didn't do that I used to do consistently that I didn't do because business is, you know, coming in consistently. So I want to make sure that I focus on the details and focus on getting better in my knowledge overall and getting better in my presentations. That's really what I'm personally going to focus on going forward. So good. You have dropped so much knowledge and whether it's from team, separating yourself, what would you say now you're breaking into a market, you're going deeper, you're touching your sphere, you're doing scripts. What would you say, how are you positioning yourself differently, especially in a market where, like you said, you have a competitor that does a thousand homes that's been doing it for 20 years. How does somebody break into and position themselves when you study? And I like asking people like you because you study the market. There's room for everybody. There's room for everybody. And uh, even within my office, you know, I think some people got kind of nervous when I came to this brokerage because they're like, he's farming my area and I'm farming that area. And like, what are we going to do? You know, I'm pretty good about it. There's only one area that I would never give up, but you know, I'm going to actually present what I do in front of our whole brokerage next week. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to move out of someone else's area within my own brokerage. So we're not overlapping. I'm, I'm very good about that because I've farmed other areas and I can move. But for a new agent, you know, I always tell them the same thing. I always tell them, you know, get after it, get consistent, you know, go out, get some exercise, flyer drop, circle prospect the area by calling, try to get open houses in the area. Just start with a small farm and start from, you know, people think they have to start big because they see what I'm doing. But, you know, if I could go back from the beginning, I would start with 500 homes and I would just attack those 500 homes every single day. I didn't have the funds to mail at that time. So I would just drop flyers. My company gave me a certain amount of, you know, copies out of the printer every day. So I would utilize that. I think, you know, people don't utilize the free things that they get from their brokerages. I, I remember uh, I was with Intero when I first met my mentor and we really started printing heavy and they were giving our team free prints. I broke five of their printers because I printed like 80,000 prints in a matter of a couple of weeks. And they were like every day coming in the prints low. And I was like, well, you guys gave me free prints. Like I'm going to use it. Right. And they quickly took our privileges away because, you know, we were, we were, you know, using it too much. But I just think that people don't use the resources that they have that are presented to them. I do see a lot of people reaching out and asking for advice, which is fantastic. That's something that I think everyone should do. I've never had a coach and I've talked to you about this. Coaching is something that I'm, you know, definitely considering as well, but just all areas to improve yourself and keep improving because there's always going to be someone that outworks you. You know, I try to pride myself on being that person, but you know, you can't get all the business, but there's plenty of business for everyone. You just have to put in the work. And I think people are scared of that and, and, you know, they'll put it on social media that they, you know, did a video or did this and, th and that, and it looks like they're doing a lot, but if you don't put in the actual hours, you're not going to get the result. It's just facts. So true and so good. Where can people connect with you? So best way is Instagram, Lex Sells Homes. Connect with me on there. Watch my journey. Um, I answer every single, people kind of trip out when they message me and they message me for advice. Everyone's messaging me for farming advice and how do I get my pricing down and how do I get things in order? And I'm helping every single person out. And I'm like, yeah, come down to my shop, check out my print shop. I'll show you everything I do. I don't hide anything. I think you should be open because there's always going to be an opportunity down the line. If you help someone, maybe they have a listing that they need your help on, or maybe it's just, you guys do a deal together. They have a listing that you need to get your buyer in. It all comes full circle and it's such a small business. And I think people should be helping each other. And that's just something that we lack in this industry. But what I do see is that 
things are transitioning right to a to a younger group that's in this business and I think the older generation really held their secrets tight. And I'm really happy that I'm seeing a lot of the younger youth like that are successful give out more information and provide more info to people because you can go on YouTube and find some, you know, a video on everything, right? And if I had that when I was younger, you know, it would have helped me so much. So I think just knowledge up and just get after it and um, don't let anyone tell you that, hey, you can't get into that farm or, you know, someone's dominating because, you know, do it for a couple of years and you'll be the one that's dominating. You'll be happy that you started small. Yeah. I think it's, you said so many key things such as contribution, come from contribution, have the mindset of abundance because there's plenty of business out there. And people remember when you come from contribution and you give value and you operate in abundance and not scarcity. So as we wrap up, there's always one question that I ask every person that comes on our show is what do you do Lex to play bigger in business and in life? For me, it's just constantly trying to expand my business. I'm constantly trying to grow. I have aspirations for my team being the top team in the country, which I will get to and me being one of the top, you know, realtors in the country. So I have so far to go and so much knowledge to, you know, to catch up on. Like, I feel like I just haven't been on top of things. So for me to play bigger, I know that I need to knowledge up. I need to push harder, work harder. And that's, you know, that's the plan. That's the plan for myself and my team. So amazing. And thank you so much, Lex, for being on our show. I appreciate you. I love watching your journey. I know when I met you, there was a crazy transition. And I just love your realness on this interview, this episode, because it's what people don't see. People see the outcome, the billboards, the success, the numbers, but they don't see all the mind stuff and all the hard work and all the mess behind the scenes. And believe it or not, that's actually pretty normal in our industry. What you see on stage, what you guys see on social media with all these successful entrepreneurs like Lex is not always like what's on the back end. They deal with a lot more things, especially mindset. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for giving our audience and our community value. I appreciate you and can't wait to keep playing bigger with you. Thank you so much.